Please join me in a pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's uh, meeting for December 18th, 2017. We'll start with public uh, comment. Is there anybody wishing to make public comment? Mr. Zanoy? What a night. I'm glad I made it. Jerry Zanoy, 16 President's of Circle, Hampton. I'm here to speak on the right, uh, right Pierce report. I have some questions that I hope they answer when they get to the table uh, for their appointment. And, uh, uh, and I looked at... Uh, the email I got from Fred that listed the 12 top items, and I looked at it uh, with some degree of intimacy here. Um, well, I'm going to start by saying that uh, the aeration and the ventilation are the two very most critical items, and ventilation seems to be getting covered as we go from the screening building to the grid building and the operations building, I hope. I didn't check that yet. But, but the aeration really gets me. Uh, table 2-1 on page 2-2 uh, shows me and tells me that we are really at we are really at or exceeding state limits right now in terms of the BOD and total suspended solids. So we got some critical decisions to make with aeration. In 2003, the original process was changed where you were fully nitrated. But in 2003, because of a series of problems, I wasn't here. I don't, I don't know. I don't hear about them. I didn't hear about them. pH, alkalinity, filamentous fibers. The process was changed to a modified process. And when that happened, the millions of gallons per day allowance dropped from 4.7 to 3.9. And so didn't the pounds per day output of T, T, uh, total suspended solids and BOD. So, <laughs> you know, we're now at the precipice, so to speak. My concern is, in reading this report, is that I'm getting mis mixed messages as to which process Wright Pierce supports. Uh, page 313, under paragraph 3.41, speaks very strongly of, 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 you know, maybe returning to the original process and adding in some supplementary processes which would take care of the pH or the alkalinity factors. And on, the, on other paragraphs, they're indicating that it's not going to make that much help anyway. We're going to have to aerate, aerate or have them need more tanks either way, sooner or later. So, and the other paragraph I will reference is uh, for, uh, page 4.6, or 4-6, 424, paragraph 424, activated sludge aeration tanks. Um... It says, for the town to continue operating with, the, with that modified process and maintain the design capacity of the wastewater treatment plant, additional tanks are going to be required. And, you know, of course, that goes with valving and bubblers and all the periphery that supports those tanks. Their high priority items on page 4-7 with respect to this activated sludge, I think, talks to the modified process, and I think they're supporting it and recommending this, but I'm not sure. And I've read this several times. So I need a hard readout from, I need Wright Pierce to stand up and tell me what process are they supporting, and then these are the items we need to do down here to, to support that process. The reason I picked on aeration, it makes up 47% of the 13.8 million. This is not an easy target here. You know, uh, you've got 13... 0.880, and the aeration tank upgrade is six million six. That's 47, 48 percent of the whole bill right there. We got to know. We have to know. Now, here's here's another problem that I brought up. I'm, I can't get into all these categories. I don't have the time. But there's been six reports published. The first one, 211, 2013. The second one, 1215, 2016. 12 15, 2016 for another one, 12, uh, 12, uh, December 19, 2016 for another one, December 23rd, 16 for another one, and the last one, January of 017. Six reports totaling 68 pages. 
late December, last December, a year ago today, and in January 31st. And yet this Very, report... You're going to have to... Wind. Yeah, yeah, I'm finishing up. Okay. This report is dated September the 7th, 17th, and I don't think it became public for distribution until November. I might be wrong. So in, in closing, I'm going to say this. We have a very short runway, guys, for getting a $14 million bill passed, if you will, request. Very short runway. You've got January and February. Argument has to be convincing and believable and backed up with facts for every one of these items. Estimates on material that can be genuinely checked out on the Internet. Labor costs. Make it believable and make it convincing. You only have two months for that. My argument is maybe this report should have been in our hands six months ago. We might have had a better shot at it. Thank you very much Thank you. for your time. Anybody else for public comment? Mr. Preston. Uh, Charlie Preston, 47 Glade Path. I just want to talk, touch on something that I didn't bring up. It came up at the Board of Selectmen meeting September 25th, 17. Christy Pulliam's appointment to finance. Uh, page five of nine was the chairman brought up the town parking lot in the revenues. I guess who came that we were down at 80 grand at the time. On page six of nine, it states Selectman Bridal. We may want to look at automating our parking lots. We'd still need people in the lots to make sure it is picked up. People have questions. Director Pulliam. The auditors would love us. Rusty, we have three lots. Regina, I agree. Griffin, been brought up many more times before. The time is here. Bridal, you can change the price from here on a computer. Chairman Waddell, is that something the BOS can do? Or does it have to go to a warrant article? Town Manager Welch. Budgetary constraint, warrant article. And then it goes on that Regina had been speaking to the precinct and doing some research and, and other things. But, you know, I'm not sure where this stands. It's one of those seasonal things. So it's on the burner and then it's on the back burner again. But I didn't know if, if, if the selectmen had any warrant article going to try to do something or if, you know, there's been through the director of Parks and Recreation where there's been requests for, you know, requests for proposals. You know, and um, I realize we don't have a back and forth here, but I'd just like to know if, you know, later on in the meeting you can see if we can do something or see if we need to do something with a, down, with a warrant article. Thank you very much. Those minutes were from the September 25th meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to make public comment? Yes, Mr. Zanoy. A quick one, because you already, you already... I'm already, used what, two and a half minutes? Yeah, yeah. Two and a half uh, pipes under the marsh. Uh, I've been following that through uh, very c carefully we, we, on the uh, internet as well. My position is this: no rationale, no engineering rationale for pipes under the ma uh, marsh to be replaced. No pipes to be put put under the marsh. I did a complete analysis last year on this. It's written up on the RTOH website, Article Ten. Read it. It's got facts. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to make <clears throat> public comment besides Mr. Preston and Mr. Zanoy? Seeing none, we'll move on to the announcements and community calendar. Uh, Ms. Regina. Yes, just uh, this is our last meeting for, before Christmas, so Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. And I'd like to just actually comment on something that Mr. Preston just said. Uh, Charlie, I want to let you know that, that I am still working on that, and I think the reason why it probably didn't get brought forward this year was because we just have so much going on that we're trying to deal with, and we want to make sure that what we put on the warrant that we deem as important does get passed because it's sort of detrimental to the town. <coughs> so I am still researching it, and I have not forgotten it. That, that is for me. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Bridal. All set. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All set. All right. I also would w want to wish everybody a happy holidays and Merry <coughs> Christmas and a safe holiday period, please. All right. The consent agenda. Appointment USS Hampton Committee, Warren White. Donation to Parks and Recreation Department. Service Credit Union for $1,000, Hampton Police Association for $800. Intent to cut, map 66-2, uh, 
uh, backslash one Timber Swamp Road, Parade and Public Gathering License, Cycle the Seacoast, American Lung Association 5618, Poll Petition, Fairpoint Point 33 35 Dover Avenue, 230 Exeter Road, Warranty Deeds, Drainage and Sewer Easement, Permanent Open Space. So moved. Second. All in favor? Uni unanimous. Appointments. Christy Pulliam, Finance Director. Good evening. The November financials. We should have received them, I believe, last Friday in your boxes. And we are on the website. I checked um, before I came. So it was the 11th month. The target is 91.7%. When you review the attached revenue report, you can see the differences in revenue from 16 to 17. The 2017 revenue is slightly below target at 91.5% and above the 2016 actuals for November. The month income was $582,716. Of that total, motor vehicles came in at $290,585, which is over the month's target by $8,023. Actually, it's under, sorry. Although it's under the month's target, it is still above the November of 16 income by $167,605. The other major contributors to the month's total were payment in lieu of taxes at $120,611, interest on taxes at $18,508, FD permits at $9,518, building permits at $30,016, departmental income at $43,094, rice sewer agreement at $20,134, and the real estate trust at $40,417. On the expense side of things, you'll find that we were under budget by $637,546, or 2.58%. In November of 16, the year-to-date expenses were $736,279, or 3.05% under the month's target of 91.7%. <coughs> Um, this month, I'm just going to go through and point out any of the departments that are over budget or significantly under. Under general government, the budget committee is $2,881 under the target of 4720 The trustees of the trust funds is $727 under the target of $917. Assessing is $93,797 under the target, which is of $263,543. Legal is 107266 over the target of 161500 And parking administration appears to be coming in, in under budget by $3,609. That's where they should end the year. I believe they, um, I think all the concerts and everything are over down there. The police department with open purchase orders is $69,118 under their target. Fire department including purchase orders is $286,211 under target. The building department is $28,595 under the target of $206,369. It should be noted here that the regular wages are low because the department went um, some time without an assistant building inspector. So if anyone is curious why those wages are low there. The Public Works Department with open purchase orders is $22,700 under target, and welfare is $14,796 under the target of $56,563. Um, in the other, other uh, revenue funds, the Fund 24, the recreation, has a balance of 152937 with beach, uh, which includes beach sticker donations of 21,144 and 15,301 being awarded in scholarships. Fund 25, the cable committee has a balance of $452,390. This fund has seen significant growth over the past um, two years in regards to the franchise fees all going into that fund so that they can 
build the fund up to um, redo the studio here and contribute some money to the studio at the um, Hampton Academy. Fund 26 private detail has a balance of $166,009. The EMS Fund 27 has a balance of $499,062. There's a big drop in the fund here from the prior month's financials due to expenditures that they have uh, recently made uh, for a power load and a power cot system totaling 41000 And I saw a requisition for the ambulance that was approved, I think, last week by you guys, so that will drop again. The wastewater system development charge fees collected in 2017 total $150,566 with a balance in this account of $192,554. The board has approved a total of $48,722 in expenditures which have yet to be expended and I think that number has actually changed since I did this because I think last week another forty-eight or 43000 was um, approved so that will come off of that balance too. And that is all I have for this, I guess. <coughs> thank, thank you, Chrissy. Expenses are right on. I have uh, no questions. Oh, good job, as always. Negative. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Director. Thank you. And this is all on the website? It is. Yep. And the line by line is on the website. I mean, the whole report, your whole report. Yeah, the whole, whatever you have in front of you is all on the website. All on the website. So if anybody wants to see any any aspect of this, how we Under spent finance. over the year, how it compares, they can see it. Very good. Thank you very much. And Thank it you. seems like we're right on target, so no problem. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, next, Chris Jacobs, Director of DPW and Jen Hall, Director, Deputy Director of DPW and Wright Pierce Engineers Wastewater Treatment Plant Warrant Article. It looks like things are working. Super. We're overcome. Technical challenges. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Can you give Tim a minute to uh, get uh, computer up and running? Tim's going to run through. Um, we've had several discussions about uh, what we're actually going to prepare as a plan to promote the uh, wastewater treatment uh, fund and bond, uh, $13.8 million, uh, the number of steps that we're going to take. Uh, I should also point out that Wednesday night, uh, Tim's going to attend the Tim and us, uh, we're going to attend the planning board meeting and we're going to run through the presentation uh, that was done previously before this board uh, presenting the, what is the contents of the facility plan. So there will be uh, other uh, opportunities, if you will, to, for the public to uh, see this and to ask questions. Um, with respect to any of the other technical comments that uh, the previous uh, speakers had. Uh, some of those questions would be best if they were put in writing, and then we can answer those directly. Uh, Departmental-wise, I would like to point out that uh, um, next Monday is Christmas. Uh, we're going to go to a shifted uh, solid waste collection. Uh, Monday's rule will be Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday accordingly. Uh, the transfer station normally closed will actually be open for the, uh, on Tuesday. And the same thing will occur the following week when it's New Year's uh, Day. Uh, we will not be collecting. Uh, the collection will be shifted uh, one day. And again, the transfer station will be open. Um, and the Christmas tree collection won't start until the first full week of January. But uh, just hope to get that out there. Uh, wise. And with that, Tim looks like he's ready. I'll turn it over to Mr. Vadney. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having us in again. And Merry Christmas. So what we're here for today is to get input from the board on what sort of public outreach you'd like us and the DPW staff to engage in in terms of an inf information campaign to help discuss some of the improvements and some of the drivers for them at the treatment plant. So we've come up with this outline really to discuss and just really to s solicit and kind of get feedback and input on how, how you would suggest or what your, your goals or desires are for this process. So can anyone, everyone see that all right up there? That's about, uh, it's a little tough to read, but basically public outreach goals inform the public, general wastewater process descri description, talk about why the wastewater treatment plan is obviously important to the town and some of the consequences of failure, uh, 
talk about the facility at the plant as it is right now, and then the importance of asset renewal. So that's kind of the goals of the outreach, is to accomplish those things. And a few of the ways we propose or we'd suggest to go about that, again, looking for your input, uh, a brochure that can go in in the mailings, uh, the social media town website, uh, town hall, library, DPW, hard copies of that brochure, and a townwide mailer with the bills. So the Board of Selection pre selection presentation that I gave previously, we could put that on Channel 22, or I'm doing a very similar presentation for the Planning Board on Wednesday night. That's something that people were interested they could tune into. Let's see, town, uh, link, the, link the video on the website. So, and also, in, not really sure how far to, you, you, the board would like us to go with this, but you know, we've, for this kind of thing previously, we've done educational videos, like a 10 minute video with some video of stuff at the plant with some voiceover of what the equipment is and what the need is and what needs to get replaced. Uh, we, at the last meeting, I had the pleasure of being with, in front of the board for, we talked about doing some tours of the plant. We can set up for, you know, where you sign up ahead of time, obviously, and, and just kind of have some preordained times where we go and I can give a tour and the, the mic, uh, Mike and Mike at the plant can help as well. So that's kind of what we were thinking. The mailer, put this, like the videos on the website, maybe do a, a special video with some key pieces of equipment and some Q&A sessions and maybe some tours of the plant. But again, if the board has other ideas or, or would like to adjust these in any way, we're here for your input on the matter and what you think is the right way to come at it. With respect to number th uh, three, we've already begun the process of uh, uh, Bill Lowney within our facility uh, is, uh, works here with the Channel 22 staff. Um, he's uh, already borrowed the camera. We've taken a number of short clips. And this is something that Wright Pierce has actually done before. Um, I forget the project that you mentioned. It was the secondary, uh, the, the last big tank that got built at the plant was the, one of the, the third secondary clarifier. And that had failed for two years prior. And then we did uh, same thing, uh, Channel 22 kind of recording. I believe Bill Brown uh, was the project manager at the time, and he spoke at the deliberative session and just kind of exactly what we're talking about now, which is just educating people about the need. And then the, obviously the voters have the final say. And the, at the bottom of and I know you've already mentioned, this is our proposed timeline of, of when we want to get these things out and done by and, and uh, essentially what we're agreeing to that we're going to stick with as far as if you are promoting this particular warrant article. Questions for the board? Regina. Well, yeah, I mean, it looks really good. But I do have a question on, so initiate and implement would be January 4th, which makes sense after the holidays. Right. But then we have deliberative session, like, pretty much one month later. So as far as the tours go, would we be able to, because I know before we said February, but if we wait till February. Oh, you're right. It's yeah. not going to. Happen before the deliberative session. We're staffed so, every Saturday morning. Okay. Um, the labs open. Um, what we would like people to call ahead because, to be honest with you, it is a high risk environment. There's a number of trip hazards, so people would have to be escorted through. Um, if I know that people want to do this, either calling through the manager's office or calling Public Works directly, uh, we can set those up. Um, we're definitely available every single Saturday from now till till March when we vote. And um, we can have any number of people <coughs> tour, tour through the facility. Uh, and I also have to, and I know I made this comment before, uh, especially in the head works, uh, if you're an asthmatic, it's not a place to be. But we do have uh, the plant staff actually carry air meters with them because we are dealing with sulfur gas. And uh, so we'd, we'd warn people. And that's, and I think, uh, Liability risk-wise, insurance company-wise, this is what we would want to do. But the plant is is open, and we can give you the nickel tour, the five-minute tour, or we can give you a, a one-hour tour. But, uh, no, definitely can do it. And I think what's important to remember here when you're looking at this is the big picture. When we talk about wanting to get out the word about what is the 13880 that we're asking for, what, it's, what is its crucial need, what happens if it doesn't happen, and having the brochure developed educates those that don't even understand completely how the wastewater treatment plant process works. I know there's a lot of comments today, you know, about the aeration and this and what train for most people, and those most people are our voters as well. 
that goes up and over their head. So it, it's not just the fine details, but the big picture as well, that our goal is to make everybody understand and make them understand and everybody learns differently. For some, it may be a tour at the plant. That may not be it for others. It may be reading the report that's on the website. For some, it may be the pictures with the voiceover. For some, it may be a brochure that's in front of them that they can process the process train and go, this is why it's important. There's 12 things that we're asking for in this 13880. It's these 12 things that relate to safety, ventilation. When we say uh, the overall demand or the flow that can come to our plant, it's not so much that it's a quantity thing, but it's more about um, the growth throughout town. What is our capability of processing? It's not quantity, it's capability. So when you hear people talk aeration and you hear people talk ventilation and headworks and what are the things that we need to do that make us be able to match up the growth we have, whether through residential, through industrial, through our new hotels, through just standard beach growth, our beach population. Keep in mind that some of this is growth and some of it is an industry that we support here in town. Um, so when you put all these things together and say initiate and implement, uh, implement by January 4th, that's us and our staff that supports us getting this done and having it up for that full month prior to deliberative session. And, and that includes a public outreach and answer session. And that is for the people who want technical questions answered. Um, it's not necessarily a place for debate. Our engineers have done the studies and these are our recommendations. And I think that that's very important. Um, they're highly qualified professionals that have made these recommendations. Uh, but we want to outreach and we want people to understand. So hopefully it gives a big picture that it is for everybody to understand what the 13880 is for. Rusty? My only suggestion is you make maybe two or three five-minute videos instead of one ten-minute video. Mm -hmm. Pe people more likely to get watched. You, it's yeah. more likely to get watched, and people may want to watch one part of it and not the other. So Wonderful. Uh, yeah, you just do it that way, working with some of the social media stuff that I do. That three to five minutes is, is what you want to hit. And I, that's something that we had talked about, and I think that that makes a, yeah. a great way of looking at the different aspects. Because or, all of us have been down there. We've seen this. We know that some of that stuff's been there for 30, 40, 50, 60 years. Yeah. We see what goes on down there. A lot of people don't have the time to go down and look at it. But if you can show them in little spurts, little spurts, let them know, and, and I think that'll help out a lot. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And just for the record, uh, the warrant article and the price on this verbally is what that you're advancing? $13,880,000 for the components that are mentioned in the phase one uh, projects to be completed that are part of the facility study that was completed this year. Thank you. I have no more questions. Thank you very well done. Yeah, I think you've got a good plan there. I think you should reach out to different groups too, different organizations to go to speak to like the Rotary Club, the Lions Club, et cetera. But I think also, you know, you have to really explain that plan to people. I mean, you've had engineers do it and you've done it and you're the professionals, but why did the regulations change? Mm -hmm. You know, why were they one thing and then all of a sudden they changed for another thing? And why now do we need to, you know, change the method that we're using to do that? Yep. So I, th I think that's all very important that you don't want to get, you know, you don't have to be totally technical, but, but you have to explain to people. And if you have one method of treating it and then an alternative method of treating it, why? Why, why do you have two different ways there? And what's the specific way that we should be going after it? I think that's really important. So I think it's important that we, you know, get that information out to people and as soon as possible with very with specific, very specific information. That, that, that would be my, you know, in trying to answer the questions that people give us. Okay. Yes. That sounds good. Uh, the one question we did want to ask, since we do want to just move forward with implementation using this plan, is if the board had any interest in being in any part of the videos um, or if we should just keep moving forward. We I, I think we have to move forward. My own opinion is we have to move forward. We have to move fo forward quickly and we have to get questions answered for people and get as much information out there as we can, specifically about the report. Anybody else? No, I'm sorry. What was the question you were asking about the Just board? if the board members wanted to be part of any of the videos we're going to create. Um, if not, we'll roll them out and make sure, um, you know, 
everybody has a chance to see them, and we'll get them implemented on websites, Facebook, the social media. The you see, we just wanted to give you that opportunity in case that's something you wanted to do. No, I I agree with Jim. I think it should get out there as soon as okay. possible, and then, like I said, if you have the brochures and the whatever the educational videos, once those get out on social media, I'll do my best to share it as much as possible. And then this way too, like you said, if that doesn't suffice some people, then they can if they decide to oh. on the tour, right? Perfect. That would be how it would work, right? Yep. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So, with that, and I'm only doing this because I saw the agenda earlier. Um, I believe we still need to address the Warren article itself. Okay. Uh, that's coming to you. Yep. If Fred, is it in everybody's packets? Well, I don't know if everybody's got it or not. But do you want to address it at this moment? Or? <clears throat> you can certainly read it so that people understand what it is. But um, with your permission, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $13,880,000 for the purposes of constructing the necessary upgrades and making improvements to the wastewater treatment plant as follows. Headworks upgrades, aeration tank upgrades, primary clarifier number one upgrade, gravity thickener number one upgrade, plant water system upgrade, primary sludge pump upgrade, thickened sludge transfer pump replacement, polymer system upgrade, septage handling improvements, operations building improvements, maintenance garage improvements, and SCADA system improvements. Such sum to be raised by the issuance of municipal bonds and notes for a period not to exceed 30 years under and in accordance with the Municipal Finance Act, RSA 33. And to authorize the Board of Selectmen of the Town Treasurer to issue and negotiate such bonds or notes and to determine the rate of interest thereon in all in accordance with the Municipal Finance Act, RSA 33. And to authorize the Board of Selectmen to apply for, contract for, accept, and expend any federal, state, or other available funds towards the project in accordance with the terms and conditions under which they are received, and to borrow in anticipation of the receipt of such funds and or the issuance of such bonds or notes as provided by the Municipal Finance Act, RSA 33. And to authorize the participation in the state revolving fund RS, SRF RSA 486 colon 14 established for the purpose and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to apply for, accept and expend such monies as they become available from the federal and state governments and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to implement such cost effective solutions as are presented in the future that may that they deem to be in the best interest of the town that may result in a lesser amount of expenditure than is authorized by this warrant article and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to take any and all actions necessary to carry out the project in the best interest of the town of Hampton. Three-fifths of vote required. Multiple. I'll, I'll make the motion that we recommend this warrant article for the 18 ballot. Second. Okay. And uh, I would just like any discussion. I would just like to say that all of those, that you really have to answer all those questions in that warrant article. Right. If we're going to get it passed, all those questions have to be answered very detailed and very explicitly so that people understand what we're talking about. All right, all in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous, 4-0. Uh, it carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. DP, DPW warrant article, vehicle warrant article. I'm going to switch here. Okay. Thank you. So we're asking, um, there was a submission of a warrant article back in August. I uh, talked about, um, in keeping with our CIP, of having um, one truck replaced, one three-quarter ton truck replaced, and, uh, our yard horse, and something else. And it came in at some $500,000. Since August, we've, as a department, have struggled uh, immensely with um, our solid waste trucks. Matter of fact, um, we've come to the conclusion that they are reaching the end of their useful life. And in some, in a number of discussions with uh, the manager, the deputy manager, um, and subtly from even direction from the board, it's come to, you know, we, we've come to the realization that we need to do with this article really what needs to get done this year. Um, 
the CIP is, is a great plan, but when things are changing on you and they're changing daily, um, you need to take action, and that's why we're here tonight. Specifically, the back in March of 2011, uh, we, we, the town, purchased three uh, sidearm trucks along with all the carts that we, we picked up. And uh, we picked up uh, six transfer trailers. Those trucks are unit numbers 90, 91 and 92 for us. This past year, we've spent in excess of, got it right here, $63,642 for carts, for carts, for parts and another 21550 for our, <coughs> our own labor and, and some outside labor. Uh, that's a total of $85,192. These trucks, just the cab chassis, only cost the town 75000 So just in the repair bill alone, we have bought this truck again. Um, in the prior year, the, the and it may come up here, uh, May or what may does not. it say? Okay, I'll just <laughs> go with my printed note. Did this nice PowerPoint presentation so I could stay on point. And uh, good rule, it hasn't worked. So we're overspent on that particular budget line, 135% uh, at this time. Um, and I also need to point out that in 2016, we spent 83,179 on the same trucks. So each, for the last two years, we have rebought the cab and chassis. So when we had the discussion internally, well, if it's just the cab and chassis, i.e. the engine, transmission, um, things of that nature, why not just replace those? Or the suggestion was made, why not lease? So we've done a, a lot of work in the last two weeks. Um, we've looked at purchasing. We've looked at uh, remount, just buying a new cab and chassis and remounting our... our our, uh, our existing equipment, the, the uh, packer portion of the truck, and we've also looked at lease to own. Um, we're recommending lease to own for to, to pick up two trucks with a five-year lease. And let me just run over the very quickly the numbers. If we each truck's about two hundred and ninety-five thousand brand new today's dollars, I think we paid two seventy something back in two thousand eleven. If we were to get the two new trucks, it would be a Warren article of 600000 um, Knowing the financial pressures that are on the town this year, that's why we look to other options. If we took and sent out two of our trucks to put a new cab and chassis under them, basically rebuild them, we'd be looking at a, a Warren article of somewhere around 531000 It can be done. It takes about eight weeks. The trucks would have to leave town. Uh, they would have to go back up to Canada where Labrie's, ah, there it is, where Labrie's facilities are, and um, total of 531. There you go. So option C, as shown on the screen now, would be to lease to own uh, a Mack truck, or two Mack <coughs> trucks with new, uh, with the new bodies on them. Uh, the first year payment would be 124000 uh, for both trucks. The five-year cost for those lease payments uh, over the whole five years would be six hundred and twenty thousand. Uh, given the type of cab and chassis that we're looking to acquire, um, we believe that these trucks would last the town in ten years or in excess of ten years. Right now, uh, they've reached what six years, and we're rebuying them again, so they're not lasting. Um, we don't see this as a prudent. The current course is a prudent expenditure of town resources. So that's why we're back here with this recommendation to you. Questions? So 600, this is two brand new trucks. Would cost 600,000. 620,000 over 10 years, so that's 62,000 no, dollars. 620 over 10 years. I'm sorry, over five, five years. years. All right, so 124,000 a year, and we're spending like average of 85,000. We're spending 85 Replacing right now, or working on what we have now. Correct. So the cost for this year would be 124000 for 18? Correct. Okay. When the trucks are delivered, you make the first payment. And then the second, 12 months from then, the second payment. Okay. Uh, the manager did work up a warrant article. Um, with the pro We've been going back and forth and making sure we have a warrant article in, uh, in order. 
there is for you to consider. Rusty? No, I think he's, they've done a lot of good work on trying to come back and see what the best way it is for us to do it. The, uh, those trucks have been problematic. They were problematic when they were bought. The type of year they are. I know I have a Dodge that has the uh, regeneration system in it too. And when I left here the other night of the meeting and uh, my light came on, so I had to go up the highway 30 miles. And that's what you have to do with those trucks. Right? You, you run them around town. And, and, and if you don't get up and run them around town, it clogs, and then you're replacing a lot of money. So I asked the, our head mechanic if, if every Friday running them up to, let's say, 125 and then back down at 65 miles an hour would do it. He basically said no because the other five days a week you're running it so slow, you're just going to continue to clog those regeneration systems. And that's the You have to do it at least a couple times a, a week, mm -hmm. a couple, three times a week to do that. But, so, but. Bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So is is this a motion now? Uh, it would be our recommendation to proceed forward, and if someone wants to read the actual warrant article. I'd Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I support your uh, lease purchase, if that's the <coughs> correct um, uh, nomenclature, and I thank you for your research, and it's, uh, it's uh, great uh, management. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So why are these trucks going to be less maintenance? <coughs> They don't have a, they don't, the regeneration system that Slough and Bridal spoke about that these trucks have on them right now is basically, uh, it's a, it reheats the gases and it's attached to the side of the engine and it doesn't get red hot enough to actually reburn the gases. Therefore, the gases just clog it right up. The, the other trucks that we're going for are specifically Max. They're specifically made for this. It's a cab over design, uh, meaning the cab's right over the front wheels, so it has a much uh, tighter turning radius. They're not trucks that we forced to marry to these to particular use. As, as it was expressed to me, the trucks that we initially bought should have been used as pickup and delivery <coughs> trucks running back from Boston to Portsmouth every day. Right. They shouldn't have been going 50 feet and stopping, 50 feet and stopping, and that is the problem. Um, so it's the wrong type of cab chassis for the particular use. Uh, so this is a, an actual truck for that use, and also it uses the new, I call it DFN, and I probably def. have. It's DEF fluid. DEF. DEF fluid, which is an additive, fuel additive, so you don't have to have a regeneration system on the engine. Pretty much anybody who had a regeneration system back in 11 is no longer manufacturing those types of engines because they don't work. And what kind of war is the is the warranty on a new vehicle the same as the warranty on a leased vehicle? Yes. And what kind of warranty is that? The, I it, mean, it is something that we would have to buy, but they are in fact leased vehicles, and I do have paperwork from Mac that says that um, if in I know there's certain uh, language in the in the warrant article that if we elect to back out, uh, it's a municipal release. They would actually pay us for the value, remaining value of the vehicle. Okay, so we would be able to get out of the lease. Yes, okay. it's, it's it has to be yes, by law. Yes, have to by law. Okay. All right. Anybody you got anything else? All right. Motion. Uh, you want me to read the warrant, yeah, article, go ahead. sir? Please. <clears throat> Shall the town of Hampton vote to authorize the board of selectmen to enter into a five-year lease purchase agreement for two Mac cab over trucks with Labrie automated side loader body units? in the amount of $620,000 and to Rosen appropriate the sum of $124,000 to fund said unit, uh, the fund said lease, lease purchase agreement in year one. Said lease purchase agreement shall contain a non-appropriation clause. This is a special warrant article per RSA 32 36 and shall not lapse until the purchases are completed or by March 31st, 2023, which is Whichever is sooner, a majority vote is required. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? All right. Four old. There is a second warrant article, Mr. Chairman, and that deals yes. with the piece of Next equipment slide. that's um, left over. One of the, in the original warrant article that we proposed back in um, August, did include a yard horse. That's a picture of a new yard horse, not the yard horse that we have for uh, just everyone's 
terminology, a yard horse is literally, it's not an over-the-road tractor to haul trailers. It's literally, we, this is something we use every single day that the transfer station is open. We, as trailers are filled, we actually pull them out of the way and uh, put something, uh, a, an empty trailer back in its place. Um, the current one that we have, and we upgraded from one where the door wouldn't shut and the windows wouldn't roll down and didn't have any heat, to this one, which is a 1980, which has heat and the windows roll up, but it also relies on a um, airbag to actually lift the trailer. Twice in the last year, the airbag has prematurely settled, and we have bent the front legs on two trailers at a cost of about $2,000 a set. Plus, we've taken the trailer out of commission for a number of weeks. If that were to occur July 4th weekend, I'm in a lot of trouble just to be able to handle it. So it's one, it's a safety issue for my drivers. Um, I'm glad no one has been injured uh, to date. <coughs> but we can, for $50,000 or less, go to the used market, get one lightly used uh, that would serve our, serve our purposes very well. Another reason for having it, um, we experienced a trailer fire two years ago, two and a half years ago in April, and it was due to hot coals being deposited in the trailer. And um, during the weekend and on Monday morning, it, the trailer ignited. Uh, we were not able to work with the fire department to put the trailer, the fire out, because we couldn't eject the load. Uh, the, the yard horse that we have has no hydraulic capability. It takes a hydraulic pump, basically, to, to move the, to eject the waste. Um, so this yard horse that we'd be looking to get has that capability in the event something like that occurred again. Questions? Okay. Um, so this is a separate warrant article. We've broken the previous one into two. And you can get a used one, but it will be? There's five of them on the market right now for 50000 or less. And it will have the safety components. We need the hydraulic connection. Windows heat and use that isn't going to cost us to continually repair. And I can't, I can't see that this one is worth much anymore. Would that be? Uh, if we, the, if the red one that we have, we might get three grand for it, four grand when we turn it back in. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All set. Uh, a motion. Warrant article. <clears throat> Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of fifty thousand dollars? For the purchase of the following replacement vehicle for the Department of Public Works, one replacement yard horse tractor, the replaced vehicle to be traded in if deemed to be prudent by the Public Works Director, Town Manager, and Board of Selectmen. There shall be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32-76 and shall not lapse until these purchases are completed, until the purchase is completed, and, or by March 31st, 2019, whichever is sooner, a majority vote is required. This is the article that was for $522,000. So moved. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank Anything you. else? No, that's enough. Well, All right, that's <laughs> enough. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you. Norm Hurley, Chris Mill, Grist Mill Dam Warrant Article. Sure. One Pass for it everybody out. and one for the one missing. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this is a petition warrant article. Thank However, you. it is not finished or signed. Um, this is preliminary at this point. Thank you. So the reason why we're here, I know that you, you want to introduce yourself. I'm sorry. I'm Norm Hurley, uh, 472 High Street. Um, I am uh, working with the Grismo Dam Group uh, for the last few years trying to get this thing, this project to completion. Uh, I want to first state that, uh, quite honestly, 
Uh, we uh, worked very well with the board, with, with the uh, DPW. DPW has been keeping us informed. Things have sometimes seemed to be a little bit slower in, in uh, getting information back from, from uh, engineers. However, we're at, at the, uh, I think, the final stages now. Uh, it was a, if, to recall, back in 2015, it was a petition warrant article to change the warrant from the year before to uh, raise and appropriate the money to repair the dam versus uh, removing the dam. Uh, so uh, at that, because of that, we're back with a petition warrant article to finish the project. Uh, the project has come in uh, approximately $100,000 more uh, than the uh, the original uh, estimated cost of opinion, which was done about five years ago, and actually done for the previous board. And that's where we got our figures from. We thought we had put a, put aside all the monies needed, but uh, after all that said and done, and I'm pretty sure that the uh, DPW came in a couple weeks ago and explained to you guys that the the, the uh, uh, bids came in and what the prices were at the bids at that time. So we're asking for $100,000. We're asking for $100,000 to come from the uh, unsigned uh, fund balance. Uh, and we're asking for pretty much the blessing of the, the board on that as well. The reason for that is it's still the town's responsibility um, for this as well, even though it's a petition war article. Our petition was to change what was actually happening. But the state of New Hampshire had put forth a uh, letter of deficiency stating that the town was required to do something to the dam, either remove it or repair it. And then they also followed up with some strong language saying that if the town elected to do nothing, they were going to start a daily fine. I don't recall the dollar amount, but it was quite hefty. Um, the, the board, previous to this warrant article that we put in, put in a warrant article to remove it. We got a uh, citizens group together and asked it to be changed from remove to repair because uh, it was all tied into the Grismill uh, building itself and the Grismill Dam. So that's where we're at now. I have uh, proposed wording. The reason why it's not finished is we really would like to try and find some way to get this up to the Department of Revenue Administration to make sure that it meets all the requirements of the Department of Revenue Administration so we don't get it thrown out at the end of this project. Um, it, you know, the town still required, regardless of whether this passes or not, to finish some sort of something on this project. The state has required them to either remove the dam or repair the dam. Um, so it is still as much the town's responsibility as we're trying to make it some our responsibility to try and get this thing brought to completion. Um, I do want to thank uh, Jen Hale and Fred Welch and uh, Chris Jacobs for their assistance. They kept us informed all along. Um, we're happy with the way things have been going. Uh, you know, like, <laughs> we would like it done three years ago. However, we know how, how things work. And you have to go out to bids. You have to do engineering and, and you know, and uh, all the permits required. So here's where we're at. Um, again, I'm going to ask the board permission to talk to the DRA or have someone from the board or here or read to talk to the DRA to make sure the wording is is usable um, for this petition warrant article. Warrant article. Um, I'll, or I can ask a uh, one of our reps to bring it up as we did last time, and they, they brought it forth to the DRA and made sure our wording was correct. Um, also looking for any input that you may have, an insight that you might give to this. We can ask the finance department, because they're in constant contact with DRA at this time of the year. We can send this, this warrant article up and see if it meets muster for them. Okay. <clears throat> this warrant article has to be in by when? The 9th. The 9th. Of January. January 9th. So we got a little bit of time. We do. All right. And since it's a petition warrant article, do we take? We don't. You have to. You have to make a recommendation on it once the warrant article is submitted. Yes. Okay. Once it's submitted. But it hasn't been submitted okay. as of yet. So <clears throat> we will take this. We'll transmit this tomorrow if the board approves. Okay. Regina. Yes, I would like to. Do you need a motion for that? No, just direction. I think that's a good idea. Rusty? Ditto. Bill? Uh, two thumbs up. Okay. And a little history of this. Just can we do a brief history? I mean, 
There's no such thing as a brief yeah, history no. on this dam. <laughs> <laughs> it's been there since 16 something or other. So uh, the state ordered us to do something with the dam, uh, and uh, there was a warrant article submitted uh, to remove the dam. Uh, that was voted. Uh, there was another warrant article submitted to, in fact, repair the dam. That was submitted. That was also voted on and approved as the second article. Uh, and we've been working on that now for almost two years, a little over two years, to try to get this done. Uh, and the town has invested substantial funds to get that done. So this is sort of the cap uh, to get that accomplished and finished at this point in time. That's kind of a really thin nutshell of what's going on here. Okay. So we will send this up. We will get back to you on the wording. So as we know. And uh, and you can write it up and submit it. Thank you, Wes. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thanks, Chief. Uh, mm -hmm. Approval of minutes, December 4th, 2017. So moved. Second. Any discussion on minutes of December 4th, 2017? All in favor? Opposed? All right. Unanimous. Manager's report, please. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, petition warrant articles on all subjects except zoning must be submitted by January 9th, 2018. Please note the town office will be closed on Monday, December 25th, 2017, and January 1st, 2018, in celebration of the Christmas and New Year's coming holidays. Uh, we want to remind everybody that the town clerk's office closes at 11.30 on Friday, December 29th. So if you're coming in to register your motor vehicle, please come in early the week, that week, so that you can get it done uh, without difficulty and hopefully not get caught without a registration. Uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to all. There are a few other things, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have warrant articles, of course, that are pending all over the place, and we have different things that are going on all over the place. Um, you heard the... Uh, uh, the information that was transmitted by the Public Works Director. Uh, we, we do have the facility closed um, during the coming, coming weeks. Uh, it will be closed Christmas Day. It will be closed New Year's Day. It's going to be open the Tuesday following each of those events. Um, Please don't hesitate to come and, and visit with the material if you need to get rid of it. It's very important. Christmas tree pickup will begin uh, shortly after the new year. Uh, January 2nd is what I have here. Um, we'll get a formal announcement out on that on the website. Uh, it's important that we, uh, we do something in that area. So uh, that's about it, sir, and, and, and we're in good shape other than that. Questions? Um, yes, Mr. Tommy, I have a question. Certainly. Could we have an update on the status of the uh, town filing suit against the state of New Hampshire? My understanding is that suit will be filed by January 31st, 2018. Thank you, Mr. Town Manager. Anything else? Regina. Oh, no, that's it. Thank you. Rusty. I, I saw the, uh, the memo from the fire chief in reference to the SAFER grant, and I agree with him. I think it's... Uh, he needs more time, and I think we should give it to him. Yeah. But I think we ought to work on that next year and come back. I, you know, the people at the beach have uh, talked about having an ambulance back down there for a number of years, and I think we uh, we need to start looking at that with the calls and stuff. So oh, yeah. I'm planning on next year to to bring that back, look at it, see what we can do, uh, see if we can get that done. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Welch, uh, last meeting of the year, if I'm uh, not incorrect, is that is that correct? That is correct, sir. Well, last official meeting, unless yeah. you hold a special. Thank you. I would like to uh, thank Mr. Waddell for his esteemed leadership in 2017. Uh, I would like to thank you and your department heads and uh, every town employee and the citizens and taxpayers of Hampton, and, of course, uh, Rusty, Regina, and Rick, the three R's. They did a good job. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, good. Ditto. Um, old business, 2018 warrant articles. What do we, which ones do we need to? Well, uh, I have, I will start off with the one I received the other day. I've received a request. I haven't received the warrant article yet, but the board needs to be advised that the <coughs> uh, cemetery trustees are looking for, perhaps looking for funding 
uh, to remove the pine trees in the Pine Grove Cemetery. They've had a complaint uh, from an abutter uh, that branches off these trees, and the trees themselves, some of them are rotten, uh, continue to shed limbs, and uh, there was recently a, a very substantial damage done to an abutter's vehicles uh, a couple of years ago, uh, and they'd like those trees trimmed up and removed if they can. So I am just, just so you're aware, I believe the cemetery trustees are working on working towards a warrant article to be submitted to the board for review, approval, and put on the warrant. For it. question, Rusty, that's all we have for. No no. Oh, no, 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 no. I just I wanted to bring okay. you, make you aware just, of what's going okay, on out there before we get we there. Did we pass a warrant article a couple years? Was we it did. Passed and they decided not to do it. Uh, I believe we were a week away from actually cutting the trees down, and the cemetery trustees uh, decided to hold off on that. So we canceled the contract. We would have to negotiate a new contract at this point to, in fact, do that work. Uh, they understand that. So we uh, <clears throat> we suggested to them they could go through public works and uh, find out who who the contact is for the various vendors who take down trees that we use and uh, try to get a, a cost from them so that we know what's going on and they know what's going and on. They want to do it this time. Uh, I get all set and then say uh, no, I'll, I'll see if the petition articles submitted that I'm assuming they're going to try to do it this time. Okay. So very good. Right. We keep our fingers crossed that everything works yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, you have contracts uh, dealing with union contracts uh, from the various unions that we have negotiated with this year. And uh, I believe Mr. that Sullivan. Mr. Sullivan is here and can address those issues for the Board of Selectmen. Good evening. So I'll start with you, Mr. Chairman. What I'll do is go over um, each of the agreements, and then one at a time as we go through them, uh, I've got a proposal, suggested uh, uh, language for your approval of the board, uh, should you decide to do that. If that's how you'd like to proceed, I can do that. Yep. So the first one I'll begin with is the uh, tentative agreement with the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. Globally, I'll say um, for folks at home that this is a process negotiating the contracts that uh, we began the, the group that was assigned by the board to negotiate, including Mr. Bean, myself, Mr. Geralt, and we were assisted by our finance director, Ms. Pulliam, as well. And Ms. Barnes joined us for a number of those as well to educate herself on the process as we went along. Over several months, we met with each of the three collective bargaining groups that were moving forward, numerous meetings, discussions, and we worked through our issues. The goal of our team was to uh, achieve the direction of the board, uh, and I believe we, we met those goals. So with the uh, Teamsters, I'll go over each of the items uh, that we touched up on the, on the uh, changes to the contract. Now, these are expressed as tentative agreements. Both sides go back and forth. We come to agreements on language changes or co cost items, and we come to an agreement and reduce them to a tentative agreement at which we sign and present we present to you, you ratify, they present to their uh, membership, and they do the same. Um, as of this point, I'm aware of the, um, the Teamsters have not yet been able to schedule a ratification. However, the two other units, the, the firefighters and the SEA, both have, and unanimously both units, both of those groups have, have voted to ratify. But we don't expect any issues with the Teamsters. It's just a matter of scheduling with their folks. So changes that we have, have made or proposed to make include uh, in the section, in the recognition section, this is something that we had talked about for a number of years, uh, to clean up some language in there on positions that are included uh, in their uh, uh, bargaining unit. Uh, there have been some confusion in some of those positions, uh, and we've added to clear up that, that uh, confusion. Um, there was some concern they had on a disciplinary section in our contract uh, that talks about uh, certain definitions of items at which they can be held accountable for, some definitions. Uh, that we cleaned up in there as well, it's language. It has to do with further definition of what is, for example, uh, immoral conduct, a little more specificity of the types of things that will be uh, considered that, um, and some other issues about notification and others. Language issues, we felt they were very reasonable issues. Um, and the health insurance. Uh, as you know, health insurance has been an issue that we've been focused on for, for a period of time. Since I've been on board, uh, the board's direction is to work with the units to, to deal with certain issues. 
um, one of the ones we dealt with was folks who um, get life, uh, life insurance, pardon me, medical health insurance from the town. Um, we work to make some folks opt off of that, and it's a beneficial thing to the town if folks opt off of that. Our number previously was very, very low. We adjusted that with uh, the, the police units before, and we have worked to uh, equalize that for other units as well. So included in this would be an opt-out provision. So if an employee has a single, a two-person, or family coverage, those will move now to be 2000 3000 or 4000 No, these plans can range anywhere from the ten, twelve thousand $12,000 range up to close to $30,000 range. So those numbers are, again, fairly short, small numbers for those types of plans. Uh, if, but if somebody comes off of it, it, it certainly is a, town's, a savings to the town. We've added new language to deal with uh, the issue that's been up for a number of times, the so-called Cadillac tax. This is one of those provisions that was included in the ACA. And that language essentially established a tax to be placed upon so-called Cadillac or high um, um, benefit plans. Our plans, some of them, do approach that limit. And we're concerned because this tax is a 40% tax. Everything's somewhat still in flux, but it's been an issue we've been watching for a period of time. We felt it very important to protect the town from any of that tax hitting the taxpayers. So we've negotiated language in each of these contracts to say that if, in fact, uh, the ACA becomes law and if, in fact, one of the plans comes up against that 40 percent, that it's going to be the member who pays that 40 percent or more likely move to a plan which doesn't affect that. Again, the goal in that language is to protect the community so that we don't have to pay anything towards that uh, for that high plan, other than our ordinary share that we, we've agreed to. Um, additionally, in the health insurance, there are some changes, as you may recall, that came forward with regard to prescription plans that are no longer available. We need to transition uh, the language from these folks and move them off of a particular plan that's not no longer going to be offered. We're going to change some language and do that. Um, this Teamster contract includes that language, which moves them over. We'll see those numbers will reduce the cost to both those folks and to the town, resulting in a savings. We did negotiate in these circumstances essentially a bridge period where because previously they had certain benefits that they will be losing, quote unquote, we created this bridge with a certain amount of money. In each case, it's about $8,000 to be utilized on those cases where somebody can show that they're a loss of out-of-pocket for there. We've created that bridge, again, a relatively small amount of money for that, that amount. And then finally, in this contract, it's a proposal for a three-year contract. The wage increases are 2.7 for each of those three years. And I will point out that one of the concessions we did working here was the contract that failed previously. Um, there were numerous positions that were well below market standard, and we made some adjustments. Those are all gone. These are straight now across the board, 272727. And that is uh, the total tentative agreement with the International Brotherhood of Teamsters Local 633. Any questions from the board? No. Regina, no? Yes? I just want to make a statement. I sat in for the first time on the negotiations, mostly for a learning process. And I just want to let everyone know the assistant town manager did a great job with town council and also the finance director sat in. And I believe we're saving hundreds of thousands of dollars by having this all done in-house now. So I am ready to... Uh, if I can just stall you one more second. I've got to read the language for it because the motion that I proposed you make includes both ratifying the tentative agreement and moving the Warren article, which I can read to you now, uh, okay. if, if that's okay with you, if you don't that's mind. That's fine, yes. Are there any other questions on the provisions in the TA? No. So what I would ask you then is to also the war move the Warren article forward. The Warren article reads as follows. Shall the town of Hampton vote to approve the cost items included in the collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hampton Board of Selectmen and the International Brotherhood of Teamsters Local 633, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing level over the amount paid in the prior fiscal year? Then there is a chart that begins and reads 2018 for 39 weeks, 2019 for 52 weeks, 2020 for 52 weeks, 2021 for 13 weeks. And each of those are on those lines 36,404, 53,483, 41,813, 8,975. And further to raise and appropriate the sum of $36,404 for the current fiscal year, 
such sum representing the additional costs attributable to the increase in salaries and benefits required by the new agreement over those that would be paid at the current staffing levels, majority vote required. I will point out as an aside, uh, there has been some discussion over the last several years of how we represent this. We did some significant research on this issue. Um, we, we spoke and met with the auditors. Uh, Ms. Pulliam did that for us. I did research looking up, reading again the Sanborn decision. And the language I just read to you is the language recommended with, by DRA, by our auditors, and a, a, many examples including Sanborn Regional, where that original decision came from, of the appropriate way to do this. So I'm very satisfied that this meets uh, the legal standard necessary. <coughs> and all of our warrant articles will be similarly formatted. Questions on that? Okay, I would like to make a motion. I move that the board vote to ratify the tentative agreement between the Board of Selectmen and the International Brotherhood of Teamsters Local 633 as outlined in the agreement and to present the cost items involved to the voters for approval and the warrant article presented by the Deputy Town Manager. Second. Well, any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Now, Mr. Chairman, I will also note to you, just to, as an aside, that the total number of employees covered by that CBA for the Teamsters is 25 that are included in the costing items. Now, moving on to the next agreement, and that is between um, the tentative agreement between the town and the um, Hampton Fire Department Supervisory Association. Um, that tentative agreement, again, deals with, we'll go to the top, those. Uh, Insurance issues we dealt with before, that is the insurance for opt-out provision to 2000 3000 4000 for the similar ones as before. Um, language that cleaned up and identified the plans for that transition period we talked about. Well, the plans that were in the contract before are going to expire, and they'll move and migrate to the new plans, saving both they and us money. What was also part of uh, with this fire unit is an agreement to have them contribute more towards their health insurance it was something that we, uh, we were able to achieve with the firefighters unit. We continue with these folks, and over the two years, they're going to move their uh, contribution rates so that they are paying a higher percentage rate, moving towards uh, parity with other units in the in the community as well. Um, we did add uh, previously uh, some, some education incentive language and some longevity pay. Uh, longevity pay was previously paid only to the secretary in the unit. Uh, we're now seeking to uh, reward folks for their longevity. If you recall, in this contract, there's really one number. There's no progression, as there are in many other units, uh, for step raises and what have you. There is just one number. Um, the longevity pay would recognize folks with 10 years, 15, 20, and 25 years of service with a one-year stipend of 750, 1,000, 1,250, or 1,500 for achieving those milestones. This is a two-year agreement with 3% in each of those two years. Uh, the education incentives, we discussed this before, again, reaching some parity with regard to the other unions, the police union and such, for uh, a, an associate's a bachelor's degree and giving them um, a stipend, a yearly stipend, if they achieve one of those of 300 for an excess of 30 credit hours, 500 for an associate's or 1,000 for a bachelor's degree. Uh, and again, the duration of this is two year. There was some other language in there that, that we put in with regard to making it come into uh, the, the, that what the board's policy is in dealing with our 457 plans. There are certain things that the board has voted previously to allow non-union and other folks to take advantage of under the 457 plan. We've added that language to include the same policy, basically following the board's direction on that. That is the entirety of uh, that. Any questions with regard to the fire supervisor's tentative agreement? Mm -hmm. I will say there are 13 members with one unfilled position that's been unfilled for a number of years that are included <coughs> in the costing items. And if it's all with you, Mr. Chairman, I'll read now the warrant article proposed. Yep. Shall the town of Hampton vote to approve the cost items included in the collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hampton Board of Selectmen and the Hampton Fire Department Supervisory Association 3017, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing level. Again, the chart is there and it says in 2018 for 39 weeks, estimated increase over previous level was 55,514. For 2019, a full year of 52 weeks, 74,283. 
in 2020, 13 weeks, an additional 10,571. And to further raise and appropriate 55,514 for the current fiscal year, such sum representing the additional costs attributable to the increase in salaries and benefits required by the new agreement over those that would have been paid at the current staffing levels, majority vote required. Okay. I'll move that the board vote to ratify the tentative agreement reached between the Board of Selectmen and the Hampton Fire Department Supervisory Association, Local 3017, as outlined in the agreement, and to present the cost items involved to the voters for approval in the Warren article presented by the Deputy Town Manager. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. All in favor? Four all. And finally, the tentative agreement between um, the Town of Hampton and SEIU, Local 1984. These are the public works employees. Um, and there are 33 of them covered by this agreement. Um, the language we worked on this is a, a three-year agreement at 333, 3% for each of the three years. Um, we did some uh, work with them on um, work scheduling um, to allow, uh, in the summertime, they vary their schedule a little bit. We, we moved some time in there at the approval of the director to allow the the vehicle mechanic to come in earlier on summer hours so that they can meet when the crews go out early if there's vehicle issues. We had no concerns with that issue. Um, we added also in here some uh, education equivalent. Um, there is a program called the, the Road Scholar Program, which encourages employees to go take a certain number of classes to become proficient in those things necessary to keep our roads and community running well. Um, and what we did was uh, work with these folks to set up stipends to encourage folks to go get those levels. There's a Road Scholar 1, Road Scholar 2, uh, Senior Road Scholar, and Master Road Scholar. Um, over the last several years, we've had several people who are Master Road Scholars, but several of those folks are retiring. It is beneficial. So Road Scholar 1 would be paid a $300 stipend if they should achieve that. These are non-cumulative. Once they achieve 2, it would be 450 If they achieve Senior, it would be 600 If they achieve Master, it could be $1,200. Um, the insurance issues, similar with the other groups, um, the stipends were increased for opt-outs of 2000 3000 4000 um, The excise tax language is in this, as it is in all three agreements, um, that protects our, our town from any kind of changes as a result of that. Um, the migration towards uh, the uh, uh, change in prescription plans and that uh, um, $8,000 uh, transition program is in this one as well. Um, some leave administration, just language with regard to allowing them to take their leave in smaller chunks as long as it's approved by the director. Um, some language to change with bereavement that includes um, a niece and nephew, which were included in other contracts, not in this, just a cleanup issue there. And we increased the stipend with regard to the boots and safety shoes that they wear on duty to include, go from 150 a year annually, they're eligible, to $300 a year that they're, they're able to have. Again, the duration is a three-year for this. Questions with regard to the, to the Public Works Union? Regina? I have no questions. No? I, I will have some comments in the discussion after the motion, Mr. Chairman. Okay. And <coughs> if I should do the Warren article at this time? Shall the Town of Hampton vote to approve the cost items included in the collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hampton Board of Selectmen and State Employees Association of New Hampshire, SEIU Local 1984, AFL-CIO-CLC, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing level over the amount paid in the prior fiscal year. Again, the chart, 2018, 39 weeks, estimated increase over the previous year level, $60,000, 679. 2019, a full 52 weeks, estimated increase over the previous year level of 121,796. 2020, again, 52-week period, 97,501 over the previous year's level. And finally, the 13 weeks in 2021 would be $18,910 above the previous year's level. And to further raise and appropriate $60,679 for the current fiscal year, such sum representing the additional costs attributable to the increased salaries and benefits required by the new agreement over those that would be paid at the current staffing levels, majority vote required. I'm ready for motion. Just one question. How many individuals are included under this? 33. In 33? This year. Correct. Okay. Um, okay, it so. Is out of these three, the largest group. Okay, you made a motion. Do we have a second? Well, she's going to read it. I'm going to make a motion oh. right now. I move that the board vote to ratify the tentative agreement between the Board of Selectmen and the State Employees Association of New Hampshire 
Inc. SEIU Local 1984 AFL CIO CLC is outlined in the agreement and to present the cost items involved to the voters for approval and the warrant article presented by the Deputy Town Manager. Second. Discussion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, all the members of our labor units in the town of Hampton, our employees. Uh, they're tough jobs. They're dangerous jobs. Uh, and these men and women show up every single day, and many of them are town residents, and many of them are long-tenured employees. And uh, every employee uh, in this day and age has options, and Hampton is certainly just one of those platforms that allows for them to sell their labor, if you will, in the marketplace. And again, we've got the chief of police here tonight. We've had public works in. We've had a fire um, um, equipment or personnel issue that's going to be put off to next year. These are extraordinarily tough and dangerous <coughs> jobs. And on the uh, one of the bargaining units, uh, significant revenue producing right in this very building where these uh, men and women produce and administrate. So I am enthusiastically supporting that. Uh, our negotiating team with the passing uh, of Wanda Robertson uh, in that uh, a sudden vacancy. Mr. Sullivan uh, was appointed uh, uh, to assume myriad responsibilities as he retired from the police department as a police chief and a career officer uh, and a tenured career there. Uh, and he's come up here and assumed uh, not only Wanda's job, but his functioning now as human resources, personnel director, assistant town manager, and is helped with, along with town council as they have co-worked uh, together to mitigate uh, the burdening and extraordinary expense that went to outside counsel that was well over s six figures, well over $100,000 a year, that went to outside attorneys, which is a substantial part of our, our then legal budget, which was five years ago. That has been driven downward and downward and downward. It, is, it has resulted in, in uh, some great negotiations and some great tentative agreements this year that uh, we enthusiastically support and will be unanimous. And it has developed a cohesion within the town. So I commend these two men before us. I commend the, the labor representatives and the negotiations that went on. And uh, the Board of Selectmen that, that chose to fill Wander's spot and in the interest of the taxpayer, in the interest of the end result, the end state, and represented the town of Hampton has shaved six figures off of an outside legal where outside counsel was coming in to negotiate um, on behalf of the town of Hampton and sucking up hundreds of thousands of dollars of legal fees. And uh, that is uh, a, a, a good part of our history that is gladly done. So again, uh, thank you, you two gentlemen. You've done extraordinary work. Thank you, Selectman Barnes, for stepping in and exhibiting that. And Mr. Chairman, thank you for your leadership on the issue. Okay, all in favor? 4 unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Can we do Christie's more out of I sold a week cheap ago. Oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Christy, we can do yours. I don't have a warrant article. So I just looked in the internal auditor. Yeah, you want to do that now? Why don't you do that now? Because I promised you you could go. <laughs> She's not feeling well. I promised you you could go first, and then. Well, they had their warrant articles when they were up here. So if you guys want to have a chance to <laughs> review what I gave you, it was just to go over what the impact of the 13.8 right. and other warrant articles have. And, um, the report didn't come in until close to 5 o'clock tonight, so I just handed it to you. I can go over and highlight some of the things, or if you guys prefer to have a chance to review it. I think the Warren article already got voted on to 13.8 by the board, and it's been, um, will be sent on to the Budget Committee tomorrow, I think. So it's up to you guys what you uh, Mr. feel. Mr. Chairman, if, if I may recommend, please, that uh, this is excellent work. I have read it, although it, it just did come in. I would recommend that uh, the uh, director uh, provide a synopsis and that this be posted to the town websites under document and finance department of budget. Okay. Yep. So I will go through it quickly for you. Um, so basically we had uh, engaged services with Flotsick and Sanderson, who are our auditors. I met with Scott Egan. He's the lead auditor up there for the town of Hampton and many other communities. I, we were basically, our the task at hand was to look at future debt for the town and to come back and report the impact that debt would have on the town. So I'm going to just skip around a little bit in his little report here. And on the second page, I think the very last paragraph is the key paragraph. It, 
and I'm just going to read it to you guys because, um, like I said, I just went over this myself. So mm -hmm. it's basically telling us that when he analyzed the 1.1 million that for Lafayette Road that was already voted on in 17, and also added in the 13.8 um, million dollar project that is going to be before the voters in March, I believe. I think it got voted to be passed on to the voters. I heard that. He's saying that our um, highest debt year will be in 2019. And then he goes on to tell us that given this scenario, the maximum debt outstanding will occur in 2019 when there will be outstanding long-term debt payable of $27,869,290. This amount is well below the ta statutory municipal debt limits established by RSA 33,4 small a which states that the town shall not incur net indebtedness to an amount at any t any one time outstanding exceeding 3% of their valuation based upon the town of Hampton's last valuation as reported for the 2017 tax rate setting the assessed valuation of 3 billion 327 million 628,520 dollars sets the debt limit at 99 million Eight hundred and twenty-eight thousand eight hundred and fifty-six. So at that twenty-seven million, he's showing that the town is well below their t statutory debt limit based on the p potential issuance, and should have capacity to assume additional debt based on these established levels. So I think that was um, one of the main goals um, that we were looking to accomplish with this. And so I just wanted to skip to that part first. When you go through and read this, um, he's basically letting the board know that yes he and i did meet i provided him with many of the charts that i use to calculate debt to calculate tax rates or estimated tax rates um fiscal impacts of warrant articles and he took those charts he reviewed the charts he confirmed that the charts were satisfactory that they're being calculated correctly all of our debt charts are being done properly um the debt schedules that we report. And so he basically used all of that, those, those, uh, that information to produce all of the reports that are here. Most of them are reports that he did obtain from me, but has gone through and proofed them. And so you will see there's several, four different exhibits, I believe. And they go through and show you the 2018 tax rate estimate of everything that we've put forward so far was to pass. Um, it doesn't take any unassigned fund balance into consideration, so no one should panic when they see that because I think it's six. What does it say there? Six ninety three, um, but or six yeah ninety three. But that doesn't take into whether or not. Um, first of all, it's assuming everything passes, and then it also doesn't take into consideration whether any fund balance is used for that. He also attaches a document that shows you the tax impact of each individual Warren article which is what I also have. And then he goes through and shows you that 13.8 million uh, debt, similar to the debt schedule that we put in our budget books. So he just gives you a rundown of all of that information. And on the last paragraph of the first ba page, he's basically confirming that the every hundred thousand dollars that we play with here in 17 and in 18 and back in 16 also every hundred thousand dollars equates to about three cents uh, on the tax rate sorry okay. and so he confirmed that's kind of what I've thrown out there before and he's confirming that in the last paragraph on the first page just saying that you know for every hundred thousand you add in revenues or every hundred thousand you add in expenditures you're either adding three cents or taking three cents off of your tax rate so that's a quick, very, very quick synopsis because I have had it just about as long as you guys. <laughs> so, thank you. Questions? So, this entire document is going to be put up on the town website. Is that what you just that's what I'm instructed to do? Okay, right. because we'll it's very interesting because you can just also tell the difference between 20 years, 25 years, and 30 years. And 30 yeah. years, 30 years. Yes. Oh, that's another the good point. The longer you go, it adds. Yeah, over three quarters of a million in interest. Right, and that's a so. good point. I'm sorry, I missed that. That was on the second page, too. He's basically saying for every five years that you add to the 13.8 uh, bond, you're adding $776,000 in interest each time. So each of the five years. So if you do a 25 and then you add 776, 776000 and then if you go to 30, you add another 776000 in interest charges. Thank you. I forgot. I Thank you very much. One.
Rusty. All set. Phil. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Zanoy, who is a, a stout and uh, eager participant in uh, the municipal platform, uh, shared comments tonight about operational transparency and his concerns, which I'm sure will be met. And the town has done that through the directorship uh, and the assistant director with their presentation and their transparency uh, going forward on the operational side. Your work here, Director, uh, this is substantially your work, which has been uh, uh, not supervised but uh, confirmed by our auditor. Uh, is a testimony to your tremendous skill. It's a testimony to the tremendous financial management uh, that this town has employed. And it's a tremendous backpat, I think, to the people of this town and the citizens that goes to the polls and uh, invests in their town. And when they look at this and they study this, it makes it uh, perfectly reasonable that it's a well-managed financial uh, package, that these are not any Christmas lists. These are the uh, exigencies of, of government and municipal platforms and queued, uh, to include the public work. So I commend you to, uh, for getting this and getting this out to the voters. And I think it makes it uh, much easier for them to make a decision to uh, vote in their own best interest and self-interest. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Super. Okay. Thank and you. so I will put that on the website tomorrow? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, I do have one more warrant article, plus I have four waivers as a result of killing warrant articles before we got here tonight. Uh, but you had requested the chief of police to, in fact, uh, review material related to uh, noise at entertainment. And you had requested that he be here this evening to make a presentation to you on his recommendations with regards to that matter, and he is here. So I will defer to him before I go back to the warrant articles I have. Let's see if we can get this working again. It was up on there. There we go. Hold on. It was working beautifully. <laughs> the way it did it. And there you go. There you go. Don't touch anything. Okay. All right, the uh, direction of the town manager, um, we want to take a look at some of the issues that we were having uh, regarding our entertainment issues. And as far as any potential amendments that we would like to make, and I apologize, I'm trying to get this, there we go. So our current entertainment ones. And this is more of an overview for everybody at home. I think a lot of folks get kind of lost in the, uh, and a lot of questions asked after the hearings we had about what was what. Is this noise? Is this entertainment? Where does this apply? Where does it apply? So I also did this for the benefit of the voters, considering some uh, potential amendments to the ordinance. Entertainment in places assembly is licensed by the town. Uh, that became uh, a separate entity from our dance hall permits. Uh, and some of the machine, uh, the uh, entertainment, the uh, coin-operated coin machine ordinance that we had, and some of this was kind of slipping in between. So an entertainment ordinance was developed. The current ordinance was adopted in 2010, amended in 2014, and again, that's why we're here tonight, possible amendments being sought for the 2018 town meeting. Our current noise standards... Beginning at noontime to 11 p.m., 75 decibels uh, at a scale of A. Late night, 11 p.m., uh, that shouldn't say 1 a.m., that should say uh, 11.59 is 50 decibels. Music stops at midnight. Obviously, we've had some issues with it. We've got a conflict between our residential folks down there that have bought our business district. Resounding theme I'm hearing uh, from these folks is they want the peaceful enjoyment of their property and they don't feel with the current ordinance and the way we enforce it that that's being accomplished. One of the things we're experiencing is the number of noise complaints regarding these facilities. Um, our first outdoor deck bar was introduced uh, about the mid-90s at the corner of L Street where Bernie's now sits in the old Lebec Rouge. The businesses, they have a short season, so they're looking to maximize their opportunity on noise levels and maximize of operation due to the short summer season. And we're talking 
probably a maximum of 12 week season where they get it <coughs> seven days a week. We have a little bit of the preseason, postseason with our festivals, but those are really weekend driven. Prior to this, we only had one outdoor entertainment uh, venue, Hampton Beach, and that's the State Park Seashell, which I'll mention from my experience and measurements that I've taken is the loudest outdoor entertainment facility we have in the town. But they are not subject to our ordinances. It's a state facility, and they've declared their sovereignty on those these types of issues. Part of the issue that is bringing this upon us is the growth we've experienced in Hampton, uh, particularly down at the beach. Since 2010, we've had over $260 million in commercial and residential growth. Town of Hampton has pitched in. New police department in 2005 to keep up. A new fire facility down at the beach in 2013. And the state also in 2014, a $14 million renovation to the, uh, the seashell and the new bathhouses north and south of those location, that location. It's led to a lot of things. Our recognition is, is a, one of the top tourist locations, not just in New England, on all of the eastern seaboard. We've been recognized as one of the top ten beaches uh, several years in a row. Recently, number one boardwalk in the USA, and I believe Swickman Barnes mentioned we've also been listed as a top tourist destination or one of the friendliest tourist destinations mm -hmm. in the country. So a lot of these things, this growth, has brought a lot of people into the community. Having grown up at the beach since 1979, I can tell you the crowds we experience on Saturdays and Sundays, it, it, it's just it's going through the roof. So the biggest issue we're dealing with is, is the competing rights that people are expressing. Peaceful enjoyment, but the right to conduct their business. I brought this up in a fr uh, previous memo, and this is from probably the most influential case dealing with music. This is the Ward versus Rock Against Racism. What this case was is the city of New York was sponsoring the Rock Against Racism and brought in a promoter by the name of Ward. But one of the things they were dealing with was noise issues in the location they were going to have this concert. And the city tried to uh, compel the promoter to utilize only sound amplification devices provided by the city, which he felt was not in compliance with the contract that they had or sufficient for the entertainment they were going to provide. But this is one of the, uh, the quotes that came, uh, famous quotes that came out of the, uh, the decision from the Supreme Court, and that's music is one of the oldest forms of human expression from Plato's discourse in the Republic to the totalitarian state in our own times. Rules have known its capacity to appeal to the intellect and the emotions and have censored musical compositions to serve the needs of the state. The Constitution prohibits any like attempts in our own legal order. What it also came out with uh, in support of the government is in war the Supreme Court ruled that the government may impose reasonable time place restrictions that are narrowly tailored to serve a significant government interest. So that's what we're really talking about here. The restrictions in our ordinance is that time place restrictions narrowly tailored to serve a significant government interest. The, compete, the competing uh, issue is the property owner. Under New Hampshire law, nuisance exists when an activity substantially and unreasonably interferes with the use and enjoyment of another, <coughs> of another person's property. So those are the two competing point of views that we're trying to deal with and mitigate the situation. So how do we balance this? This is a copy of the permanent injunction um, from what's commonly referred to as the preacher case where officers of the Hampton Police Department took into custody two gentlemen that were uh, using amplification to preach down at the beach, and after being told to cease and desist, they were arrested for disorderly conduct. The town entered into this agreement, uh, into this permanent injunction, uh, in the U.S. District Court in Concord with Judge LaPlante. And what it reads is the defendants, their agents, employees, and all persons active or concerted participation with are hereby enjoined for enforcing or applying New Hampshire RSA 644-2, which is disorderly conduct, so as to preclude the plaintiff's speech activities in traditional public foray, including but not limited 
to the Hampton Beach Village District, Ocean Boulevard in downtown Hampton. During the hours of 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., provided any electronically amplified speech activities do not consistently exceed a decibel level of 80 decibels from a distance of 65 feet. So you've heard me speak many times about where we should be taking measurements from and decibel levels being enforceable. This is one of the areas where I draw upon is how do we balance this issue? Well, legal decisions, setting precedent. And I think we have one right here. We also want to look at the science of it. This is from the National Institute on Deafness and Other Communication Disorders. This is part of the National Health Institute, and this is based on noise-induced hearing loss. Sound is measured in units called decibels, sounds of less than 75 decibels, even after long exposure, are unlikely to cause hearing loss. However, long or repeated exposure to sounds at or above 85 decibels <coughs> can cause hearing loss. The louder the sound, the shorter the amount of time it takes for noise-induced hearing loss to happen. Now here's some examples, the average ratings of some familiar sounds. Now I think I've spoken a couple times here regarding the decibel level. I know just because of my voice, I'm generally around 65 decibels speaking as I am tonight. You can see normal conversation is 60 decibels, which again was my concern with the ordinance at 50 decibels. How do we enforce a level that's below normal conversation? coming from an entertainment facility. I don't feel we can reasonably do that. I don't think the court would ex accept anything of that nature. You can see some of the other levels, uh, the motor noise from heavy traffic, 85 decibels. It is not unusual to be down on Hampton Beach standing outside an establishment when the music isn't playing to get decibel readings that loud. So our solutions. An amendment to our current enter enter uh, excuse me, entertainment activities. Considering the competing issues we have between the businesses and the residents, I thought the best thing was to give you the, the board a couple of options that they may decide to move forward on. My first op option, permit sound levels up to 75 decibels during legal hours of operation. That means all legal hours of operation. All outdoor entertainment activities are to be concluded by 11 p.m. Sunday through Thursday, 11.59 p.m. Friday and Saturday. So what this gives us is it gives us a little bit, maintains the decibel level we have right up to 11 o'clock now, and then on Friday and Saturday they get an additional hour at that decibel level. It does shave an hour off the operating hours because uh, the current ordinance right now uh, is... No, pardon me, 11.59 is the appropriate time for Friday and Saturday, but on Sunday and Thursday we're shaving an hour off. I think that's something similar that you did with a license that was in question earlier this year um, where we limited it during the week. <coughs> Option number two is increase the sound level to 65 decibels from 11 p.m. to 11.59. Maintain the sound level of 75 decibels from 12 p.m. to 11 p.m currently exists. The importance of the 65 decibels is something I can enforce. 50 decibels is just, I don't know how we could possibly enforce uh, that decibel reading from 11 to 11.59. If I was going to be asked to suggest the one I would pick the most optimal for the town to adopt, I would recommend option one. And if there's any questions. So for option one, it would be taking the current ordinance as it stands, 75 decibels to 11 for every day. That's how it is right now, correct? Mm -hmm. And then the difference would be Friday and Saturday, you would extend that 75 till 11.59. For 59 minutes, yeah. Okay, thank you. The reason I made that option was looking at what, where we went with it last year and the issues that the people raised was those midweek items because remember the season extends beyond, you know, before the, before the summer and after the summer where we, we have kids and people have to get up for work, uh, kids getting to school, getting up for those type of things that, you know, Sunday through Thursday I felt it was reasonable to, to stop the music at 11. 
but that's for everybody. That's not just for under the ordinance. You folks have the the right to put con additional conditions on any license you issue. This just lowers that bar. Okay. So you, you're knocking it down to 11 o'clock Sunday through Thursday. So nobody's license could exceed that throughout the town of Hampton if this was adopted. Okay. Thank you, Chief. And you, you're still talking, taking that reading, would you say, 80 feet from the building? Uh, no, we take the we take the reading from the point of the complaint. I just want to make sure that's... Yeah, that, that I know there were some folks that thought, you know, I, I know because I participated in the development of that portion of the ordinance. It was always the intent that the reading would be based on a complaint and that the reading that was going to be used with, uh, to determine whether it was in violation was going to be from the point of the complaint. Uh, we had dwelled on potentially doing a distance, um, and that may be more feasible. The only question is, you know, we're going to have to measure that distance when we go to take take the readings. Okay. But I think I just want to make sure that yep. was that was out yep. there. Bill, negative, sir. Thank you, Chief. And of course, this still means that a business can remain open until one o'clock. Correct. They all they have to do is they have to turn off the outdoor entertainment. So a place could still be serving food, they could still be serving alcohol, but they could not have the music point. My only uh, point would be giving the business one extra night, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, or Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That would, that would, be, that would be my compromise, that we give one extra, you know, that, that we're given five nights of quieted down and give three nights for a weekend. That would be my opinion. I would say usually you want to do Sunday because most of your three-day weekends are Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah. So. We do have Memorial Day and Labor Day falling in there and the occasional Fourth of July that will fall on a Monday, so that would be three days. So what are we doing tonight? We're, we're, we're putting together a Warren article to, or an amendment to the Warren article? I think that's what you're going to tell me. Okay. All right. And based upon the recommendation, or you're going to tell me not to proceed with anything. Okay. So. Okay. I, I would like to amend the recommendation to, three, to a Friday, Saturday. Sunday. Sunday. If I may, Mr. Chair, yep. if I may. Um, one of the points you brought up, you may want, pardon me, also want to consider is, do you want to put something in about those holidays? The special so you're not holidays. dealing with, if you have a, a Tuesday night, 4th of July, you know what I mean, so that you, to include in that language whatever you choose and holidays, or maybe identify the summer holidays that are important so you know those dates. Okay, Memorial Day, 4th of July. Yeah. Day. that enforceable? Yeah, as long as we're aware, as long as it's codified in, in the yeah. ordinance, uh, so just so I'm clear, you still want to include um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday for the 11:59, plus any holidays that fall during the week. Yeah. So. And so all all businesses that would be subject to the entertainment license would be governed by these same. Yep. Correct. Subjects. Say you middle line, take Sunday out, Monday. So it'll read. All outdoor entertainment actions are concluded by 11 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 11.59 p.m. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and legal holidays. You put legal holidays under RSA 288. Then you have a statutory reference to what holidays are. The only thing I'd say is be cautious on that because you don't, you know, what is your intention? Is it during the summer? Do you include that? Well, you need to include that if it's going to be too just many summer. Outdoor entertainment locations yeah. are going to be on, you know, January Still, yeah. first. But be cautious about what you're approving. Either that or, or, or enumerate the holidays. One of the two. I think this works. Because I don't think we're going to get many things past Columbus Day. Most of 
I think shut down there. Those things are shut know. down then. Yeah. So what was the RSA again, Fred? RSA 288. Is there any colon? There's only one section. <laughs> no. so, I suppose 288 colon 1. CH period. Huh? RSA CH period 288. CH. Chapter. Oh, no, the, the way they read it, they put it like that. Okay. We can adjust that anyhow. Sure. Sure. So what do we need now, Fred? Do you need a, a motion? Well, if that's what the board would like to do, um, I would make a motion to amend the ordinance in accordance with this particular description. We can go from there and pre pre prepare the, uh, the warrant article and bring it back to you for inclusion at your next meeting, which would be the first Monday in January. Second Monday in Second January, Monday excuse me, at 7th. We won't be here on the 1st. No, we won't be here on the 1st, but he'll be here on the 7th. Got a motion? Yeah, I'll make the motion to to incorporate option 1 as presented <laughs> and amended by the chief, by the chief and uh, put it forth in the warrant article. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. second. Discussion? No. All in favor? Four oh, unanimous. Uh, I'm an abstention. Oh. Abstention. 3 0. 3 0 1. Very good. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Great. Wow. We're getting there. You're getting there. You're getting there. Mr. Chairman, I have uh, Thank you. one warrant article, and I believe Council is going to want to talk to someone else about that before we, in fact, discuss it. In addition to that, I have. As we were going through the warrant articles and the budgets for this year, uh, a number of things were cut out, and we had indicated at that time we would bring them back for uh, approval subject to availability of funds uh, for waivers just before we got to the end of the year. And I have four of those okay. that uh, I need the board to grant waivers on. Um, the first one deals with the purchase of the electronic visible signs that we have. Uh, as you perhaps know, those signs are uh, becoming somewhat obsolete because they, they're somewhat old now. They're a num quite a number of years old. Uh, the cost of these is $17,500 per unit. They're programmable from an office by computer. So that's it's a little more expensive than uh, a regular unit. We're suggesting that four of those units be purchased for a cost of $70,000. And since there is a specific manufacturer, Wenko, uh, and, and it is a single cost unit. Uh, we would like to have the board grant a uh, waiver for the purchasing policy uh, to request under section 718-16 a single source and 718-5.1 as being in the best interest of the town of Hampton to purchase those four units from funds at the end of the year if they are available. The second one we have is you want to do this individually or you want to do uh, up to you. How much was the first one? Uh, first one was seventy thousand dollars. All right, I'll make the motion. Second. What are we talking about? Science. Electronic signs. Okay. Portable electronic signs. And that money that that has been previously authorized to be purchased. No, they're not in the budget. We're talking about money from the end of the budget at the end of the year to replace the ones that are becoming obsolete that we have. Thank you. And they're programmable. I'll second it. Discussion? I, this is the first time I've heard of them. I just, uh, I, I know we own four or five of them right now, I believe. Um, we did have five. One is... Uh, was destroyed. It's obsolete, obviously. We got rid of it. We have four, uh, and they're gaining an age, and they're becoming a, a problem in maintenance. I, I just, I, I can't see it. Ms. Okay, that's fine. Doesn't make a difference to me. Right, we have a motion. We have a, uh, a second. All in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Oh, no, I oppose. Okay. Opposed. Two two. So. two two. That's fine. That's okay. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> we have a decision. Yeah. Uh, they ask for money, and if they don't get it, they don't get it. Uh, the second one is for twenty thousand four hundred dollars. It is for the purchase 
uh, from a single source supplier. We have, we've been buying these each year. Uh, 30 sewer covers. They're waterproof. Uh, they, uh, they seal our sewer inlets so that they will not take storm water into the inlets. Uh, we, have been, we have been buying these every single year. The waiver is the same. There are 30 units. Uh, the waiver is from Section 718-16. It is a single source. And 718-5.1 uh, being in the best interest of the town. So are these... These are the new covers. The covers that are sealed? Yes. So that they won't allow water that is correct. to infiltrate when yep. the roads flood down there and stuff? Yes. We've been trying to replace as many as possible, and, and we'd like to replace 30 more. What's the cost on that? Uh, the cost on this is $20,400. Do we have a motion? Uh, motion? All right, this is going to prevent infill. Yeah, I'll make the motion. I think I'll we, second it. You, you know, we have that infiltration down there. You know, we talk about it all the time, or what we, we have doing it down there, and I think right. this is just a small part of it to help. And that, and that adds to the, the wastewater treatment plant, right? Absolutely. It does. It does. It does. All right. Any other discussion on it? Yeah. I, I, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's late in the game. Uh, now we're up to 90 grand that's been proposed. Uh, we with that that funds two or three part-time uh, public works guys for summer to get stuff done, and uh, I don't support it. <coughs> okay, all in favor? Opposed? Three one. Three one. Uh, the next one is this is for Atlantic from Atlantic Recycling Company Incorporated. It is a quotation to re replace the compactor at the transfer station for the amount of seventy-two thousand six hundred and sixty-one dollars. This has been removed from the warrant now two years in a row. Uh, and needs to be replaced. We just finished uh, trying to weld new sections onto it. It would be a waiver from Section 718-5.1. Okay. I'll, I'll make the motion. I, you know, I've I've seen that that that's the center one down there, isn't it? Is it's the one on the end. The one on the end. The one on the yeah, end. Yeah, because the original equipment was a transfer station, and that transfer station was put in in. Long time before early, I got here. Early 2000s, I believe. Yeah, it was. So we, we've gotten our work out of it. So. Okay, I'll second it. Uh, discussion. Yeah, now we're up to 160 grand, which is 10 percent of the sewer project. I say no. Okay, all in favor? What, can I ask a question? Yeah. So this, all this money is, what we think is going to be left over that we can now use. If money is not left over, we won't we won't sign the orders and issue them. This is, a, this is a warrant article that we pulled from the warrant. All right. All right. It's been in, it was defeated the year before. We pulled it this year. It's in the budget. Uh, it's going to be pulled from the budget for 2018, so it'll be done in 2017 if the funds are available. Okay. That's the only contingency. Funds have to be available at the end of the year. And it will be taken out of the 18 budget. That would be taken out of the 17 budget. Yes, okay. but it's in the 18 budget. It's in the 18 budget. It will be removed the 18 okay. budget. Okay. Uh, I'll say yes. Three. Opposed? One. And the last one is the, again, this was something that was in the budget uh, and will be removed if it's approved. Uh, and it was requested as a separate warrant article as well, which was removed from the 2019 warrant articles. And that's the replacement uh, of the motor on the Marine One, which is $16,121. As you recall, we, re we did replace a motor last year, or earlier this year, on Marine One uh, that was defective. This is the same motor, same age. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Discussion, and it's going to be removed from the 18 budget. Yes, sir. It funded yeah. through the 17 budget. That is correct. If funds are available. Yep. All in favor? If discussion, none. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Look like. Yeah, he said that. Okay, that's all I got. Thank you. I'll refer you to town council for the other warrant article. Uh, okay. Mr. Chairman, um, because. Uh, what uh, the town manager has just referred to would require a, 
first going into a non-public session. Do you want to take up any other business before we do that? Yeah, acceptance of bond for 13700 We would recommend that the selectmen accept that. That's been approved by the various agencies in the town and meets the requirements of the planning board as well. Okay. So, so moved. Second. All in favor? Okay. And I believe uh, State Representative Mesmer may have some information for the board under uh, a new business, if that's permissible. Mr. Chairman, uh, Representative Mesmer uh, uh, has been an advocate in the legislature and on the water issue. Last week, uh, uh, there was a development under uh, um, the uh, Coakley Landfill Group and them hiring a lobbyist. Mr. Welch had some salient and um, important cogent remarks about that. Uh, Representative Messner simply wanted to, um, be, she had a prior commitment, couldn't make public comment, wants to spend just a couple of minutes to uh, discuss her legislation that the lobbyists for the CLG um, can neither affirm nor deny that they're going to uh, oppose or support. So I would ask that uh, she be allowed the courtesy to sit next to Attorney Gerald. She's worked with us closely before and spent a couple of minutes. No problem. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. State Representative Mindy Mesmer from Rye. Um, like uh, Representative Bean said, uh, I did uh, have a conversation with a lobbyist leaving the uh, commission meeting last week who said that he was hired to fight my legislation. So um, that wasn't specifically said in the uh, newspaper article, but that's what he said to me. He said, you're not going to like it. I was hired to fight your PFC legislation. So um, I just wanted to um, provide a summary of my legislation to the board tonight. May I give the copies to you? Thank you. There are several pieces of legislation that would affect um, the town of Canton residents and their, their water system. Um, The f one of the first items, I was going to just, I didn't bring enough copies. My, I have kids and they used all my paper. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to find a. a Here, one. do you want one of these? We yeah, can share. Grab one of those. Um, the kids will do that too. They will. <laughs> <laughs> so always when you need it the most. Uh, there's on the first page 2094, 2018 2094 has to do with triggers to um, when the state must sample uh, uh, wells for PFCs when they reach a certain criteria. Uh, there's a sort of a buffer around the standard. Right now there's kind of a, there's various places around the state where they don't sample uh, within what I consider to be a safe buffer. Um, so things like that. Um, there's a couple other bills. Um, 2375 has to do with um, asking them to create surface water standards for PFCs, which is relating to all the surface water bodies that uh, start at Coakley Landfill. We have no surface water PFC standards in the state right now, um, nor does the EPA. Um, on page 3, there's 237, oops, 237, 2475, which I call the Nancy Stiles bill. She um, wanted me to put this in because there was some continuing, still is, con discussion around whether or not it's safe to stock fish and if people should be fishing in those, those surface water bodies that come from Coakley Landfill. So that one is in. It talks about the need to sample and create standards. Uh, the biggest ones are 2503 on page 4, which outlines the authority the state has, I believe, to already compel the uh, CLG group to act to remediate Coakley Landfill. Um, they have issued a letter to us. Um, many of the uh, Seacoast re uh, legislators, including Representative Bean and myself, sent a letter to uh, the DES saying we wanted them to do something about the remediation, remediating um, Coakley Landfill. They responded and said, yes, it's an issue. We do agree it needs to be fixed. And then EPA has said it's not a public health threat. So we're sort of in a, in a situation where uh, we have to figure out a way to move things forward. So this bill is intended to outline, uh, it outlines where the state, I believe, has the authority to make them do that. And 2509 has to do with um, adding additional PFCs to the list. Right now the state and the EPA only regulate two of the PFCs. There's several other PFCs, as, as you probably know, that are coming up in our water uh, related to Coakley Landfill and Peas as well. Um, those are the, the big ones. So. Um, just wanted to update you on those 
uh, bits of, of legislation that I've put in this, this session. So I would hope to have some support, if possible, from uh, the, the town of Hampton for those. Thank you. And, uh, it's, it's my understanding that this evening there was going to be some discussion by the Portsmouth City Council relating to the hiring of the lobbyists that Representative Mesmer referred to. I don't know what came of that. I don't know yet. It's probably right now. Going but on. Uh, <laughs> the city of Portsmouth uh, pays more than 50 percent of any costs incurred by the Coakley Landfill Group. Okay. And according to the comments from the city council, they were not informed of that before the lobbyist was hired. So. Okay. Right. Interestingly enough, I think it was, I'm staying corrected, but I believe it was the state of Michigan came out with a standard today for th these particular types of chemicals. Uh, yes, five parts per trillion. Filed, five, yeah, five parts per trillion. So you were seeing a gradual decrease over time in what other states feel is safe, which yeah. is what I've been talking about for in the state here, too. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks Thank for the update. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Representative Messner. Mes Representative Messner, could you s uh, one, one second, just very quickly, it, it yep. is a very important issue. Your, your comments about uh, what Mr. Welch, who was quoted in, in Max's paper about uh, could you please? Just yes, I'm sorry. I'm, yeah, I yeah. forgot to. I mean, I'm really appreciative of the comments you made. Um, I heard the tape, uh, and I, I really appreciate the support from the town. No, it's hard to believe what we heard. And, and specifically, you stated that what Mr. Welch said is that this this is worse than a conflict of interest, which is right. bad enough. Right. Yeah. But that this goes against the very essence right. of government. Absolutely. Okay. Right. Good. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you, Representative Thank you. Messner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, Mark. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, if the board would uh, uh, entertain a motion to go into a non-public session under RSA 91 hyphen capital A colon 3 Roman 2 small c and RSA 91 hyphen capital A colon 3 Roman 2 small e, uh, that being uh, those being reputation and uh, litigation. Okay. Uh, first of all, I just want to say that we most likely will be coming back into public session and we may be taking a vote in public meeting. So right. Channel 22, we would ask you to go off while we're at the, at the uh, non-public, and Very then nice. we would ask you to go back on when we come into public. Is that right? That's yeah. correct. Thanks, Max. Let me just check with 22, make sure that they're... Uh -huh. well, I'll make the motion under 91A. Okay. 3, Roman yeah. 2, yeah. Yeah. small a. Okay. I'm sorry, small c and small e. I'll second. I'll make that motion. Okay, roll call. Regina, Rusty, yep. Phil, myself. Yep. Good job. Okay, four. Nice. All right, thank you, Channel 22. We will be back probably. Well, you told me we'd probably go back All in right. sessions. All uh, right, we're back in public session here. Um, do I have any motions? You want to seal the minutes? I'll make a motion to seal the minutes. Second. The non-public we just had. All right, all in favor? All right, the minutes will be sealed. Do we have a motion on the... There he is. Do we have a motion on the uh, on the uh, Warren article? Do we have... Yes, we do, Mr. Chairman, and if, if Town uh, Esquire could uh, present that to okay. the Town's Yeah, uh, the motion uh, would be uh, not to put the marsh pipe replacement uh, that was on last year's warrant on this year's warrant. Okay, that's the motion. Do I have a second? Oh, do I have a motion? You make the motion. Yeah, I'll make do I have a second? Yes, sir. Okay, all in favor? All right. Opposed? None. So it will not be on the uh, on the warrant articles. Warrant articles. Uh, closing comments. Just wish Mr. Griffin get better soon. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Anybody else? Yeah, motion to adjourn at twenty-one forty-two, sir. Second. All in favor? 